It was raining hard and never really dawned on us that this is something that's going to be really bad. The Dallas Cowboys indoor practice facility collapsed. I'm sure it's not very often that you get a call saying a building came down, and especially something as high profile as, as the Cowboys facility. Sam! I thought, I'm sure it's a tornado. I'm sure of it. My thought was, a run like the wind. Yes, get on. I, I knew that there was a very, very likely possibility that not only was somebody hurt, but that somebody might have been killed in that. From the Weather Channel, this is Storm Stories with meteorologist Jim Cantori. The Lone Star State of Texas is known for many things. Oil, brisket, and of course, the Dallas Cowboys. The five-time Super Bowl champions are considered to be the most valuable team in sports. They're known as America's team, and they're one of the city's crown jewels. This is a football crazy town. The Cowboys are, are huge here, certainly, if the Cowboys win on Sunday, the mood's always better on Monday around here. But the Cowboys' toughest opponent turns out to be Mother Nature when a fierce storm hits the team head on with tragic consequences. Through the community, through the media, through the players, none of us ever in our wildest dreams ever thought that something like this would ever happen. May 2nd, 2009. The start of the NFL season is still months away, but the Cowboys are hard at work. They had a rookie mini camp. Uh, it was the weekend after the NFL draft, and there was about 26, 27 players, and they are mostly rookies and, and first-year guys or guys who spent last year on the practice squad. They was giving the players a, an opportunity to show what they could do on the field. No veterans were present at that time, so a lot of them were just young men hoping to make a spot on the Cowboys roster. The local media all sent reporters and photographers to cover what they think will be a routine practice. Among them, are the Fort Worth Star Telegram's Mac Engel, KDFW TV cameraman Larry Rodriguez, Dallas Morning News sports reporter Todd Archer, and Dallas Morning News sports blogger Tim McMahon. When you go into sports running, you, you don't think about covering natural disasters and collapsing buildings and those kind of things, but you never know what can happen. On game days, the team plays in front of 100,000 fans at Cowboys Stadium. But on practice days, players use a smaller field in nearby Irving, where the team's headquarters are located. It's like any office park building that anybody would go to, except they have locker rooms, a weight room, and, a, and meeting rooms in there. There are three fields at the state-of-the-art facility known as Valley Ranch, one of which is covered. The Cowboys had to go to a local high school for years to use their indoor facility if there was poor weather. I just always assumed that they had something on site, and they built this one in 2003 when Bill Parcells showed up and uh, they used it a bunch. The covered field is protected by a white tension supported dome made of fabric and metal. It looks like sort of a thick, heavy, like tarp, like a really, really heavy tarp. So you can imagine when the rain hits it, it's amplified significantly. The indoor field is used frequently because of the brutal summer heat in Texas. Temperatures often soar well over 100 degrees and vicious thunderstorms often follow. They would use it a lot just because it gets so hot, you don't want to burn your players down and, and, and wear them out in the heat. But if there was rain coming, they, they would go in there a whole, whole bunch of times. We had been in there when it had been raining and bad rainstorms as well. Texas is no stranger to violent weather. The state averages nearly 150 tornadoes each year. Flash flooding, hail, and intense lightning are regular occurrences. And hurricanes are a yearly threat five have struck the state's coast in the last decade. Texas is in a unique position. We have the Gulf of Mexico immediately uh, to our south, which is a source of warm, moist air, which often serves to fuel the development of strong and severe thunderstorms. We have the Rocky Mountains just to our west and a source of dry air coming in from the higher plateau off to the south and west. We also often get upper level disturbances that move across the Rockies and sometimes the mountains interact with the stronger winds aloft to make those disturbances more uh, intense. And when you get all those conditions together, warm, unstable air, dry air, and upper level uh, energy, it's often the, the battleground for uh, severe storms. The Cowboys move the rookie practice indoors because of the weather. 
but the reporters assume it's nothing out of the ordinary. I had no idea that there was something severe coming. I just knew that obviously there was rain in the forecast, so they wouldn't have moved it inside. I hadn't checked the you know, weather forecast or anything like that. But meteorologists at the National Weather Service in Fort Worth, Texas, are watching the atmosphere carefully. Our midnight shift and our day shift knew that this was going to be an active weather day in North Texas. Additional staff were called in around midday. Uh, we knew it was going to be a long duration event. The Weather Service is concerned about a cold front that has screeched to a halt over the area, giving Dallas several chances at heavy thunderstorms. We had a, a cold front that had stalled just south of the immediate Dallas-Fort Worth area. As it stalled, warm, moist air lifted northward over that cold front, nearly stationary by that time. We also had a strong upper-level disturbance over the southwestern U.S., moving over the Great Basin, southern Rockies, headed towards North Texas, so that we knew the combination would likely create multiple rounds of strong to severe storms, posing a severe weather threat and a flash flood threat as well. The storm rapidly intensifies, and a severe thunderstorm warning is issued at 3.06 p.m. Nickel-sized hail falls in the area, and high winds are recorded on home video. It was pretty much nonstop. We had round after round of uh, severe thunderstorms, large hail, damaging winds, a few tornadoes, and some flash flooding uh, for about the next 12 to 18 hours. Those at the Cowboys practice first notice intense rain as the tent-like structure booms with loud echoes. Generally, throughout practice, you can hear the quarterback's cadence. You can hear them standing over center, you know, hut one, hut two, hut three. Got to the point where you couldn't even hear yourself, much less the quarterback or the coaches. The storm bears down over the practice field, and the walls begin to flap in the high winds. The building started to, to fluctuate one way or the other with about three feet give, which was something we've never, ever recognized before since the bubble's been erected. There are four doors to the building. To the, to the bubble. Uh, there's one on the west, east, north, and south side. And as the wind would really start, really start to pick up, a porta john that the players will use if they need to use the restroom during practice had been blown over and blocked one of the doors. When the huge lights begin to sway, it's clear this is no ordinary storm. When I looked up and I saw those lights swaying, I knew that, oh my God, we could possibly be killed. The lights put everyone on edge. I remember looking up and seeing those things start to, to come back and forth. And that's when I got nervous. And I never got nervous thinking anything more than one of these things might snap. I just took a few more steps back thinking, wow, this, this one of these things might snap. And then it calmed down. But it's a momentary lull. A huge gust of wind follows and slams into the structure as cameras roll. I decided I need to look for a place to run for safety just in case the building was to come down. And no sooner do I take a step in the direction of what I think might be a safe place, you just heard ripping, metal, and, and, and fabric tearing. I look up, and then immediately you saw the sky open up, and the indoors became outdoors, and we just started running for shelter. The building crumbles in front of their eyes. It's surreal at that point. You don't know what to do. I mean, it's not like you have training and say, OK, when this comes, this is what you're supposed to do. Reporter Todd Archer, on a different part of the field, tries to escape. We couldn't open the door. The door wouldn't budge. It was either from the wind outside or it was a pressure from the, from the other end, opposite end, lifting up and, and not letting you. The metal and fabric structures come crashing down on top of it. Something hit me on my back shoulder and on my arm and knocked me down. Todd's trapped underneath the wreckage. It was on my legs, and I tried to, like, lift my legs a little bit and move, try and get it, but it, it, it wouldn't move at all. I started saying, hey, help me. I'm under here. Someone help, help me, help me. It's complete chaos. Uh, I knew that there was a very, very likely possibility that not only was somebody hurt, but that somebody might have been killed. Severe thunderstorms sweep through Texas on May 2, 2009, and slam into the Dallas Cowboys training facility during practice, causing it to collapse. 
the canopy is torn apart in seconds. The fabric ripping and flapping was loud, and then you combine that with just the, the twisting and, and screeching of the steel. And one of the most horrifying sounds that I've ever heard because it was, it was so sudden and it was terrifying. Many think they've been hit by a tornado. When the thing started to come down, I thought it was, I'm sure it was a tornado. I'm sure of it. And my, my thought was, you know, run like the wind. About 70 people are inside the football field size dome. Some escaped through the exits. It was coming down basically as I was going through it. And I want to say I got through the door as it came down. Others struggled to get out. Something came down and hit me on the neck, but I, I was able to scramble out of that pretty easily within a matter of seconds. But I didn't get out of the door. The door collapsed when I was still inside the building, and I ran, you know, kind of where the door used to be and got out of that way. Reporter Todd Archer gets trapped. When I was under there, I, I couldn't see anything, but I'm thinking, did the whole thing come down? Is the rest of the stuff going to come down? Is this a tornado? What's going on? Is someone going to step on me? It was a creepy feeling not being able to see anything. Cameraman Larry Rodriguez continues to film as players search under the twisted debris. The seasoned cameraman has not emerged unharmed. A player tells him he's bleeding. His hand, cut to the bone, will eventually require nine stitches, but he's lucky it isn't worse. I never shoot with my left but I open, but for some reason something told me to. I opened up my left eye and at that time one of the beams that was falling from the sky hit the stairway that I was running towards. It righted itself and almost came like a projectile towards my chest. And I turned in such a manner where it missed me, but it caught my hand. Despite the injury, Larry keeps filming. Many appear to be in shock and unsure what to do. A lot of screaming for help, a lot of screaming for, you know, to see if who needed help. It was just, it was insane. It was just insane. Team members start screaming for Sam, a Cowboys cameraman who had been filming practice on top of a 40-foot tall piece of scaffolding. Oh, Sam! Sam! Now, the bubble is 80 feet tall. So Sammy's half that distance. And the only way down is through a ladder. I mean, and it. it at best, maybe seven, 10 minutes to get down. The scaffolding has collapsed. There he is, there he, is. he comes crawling up through the tower, and the players start extracting him from there. Oh, oh, God. Incredibly, the team cameraman is OK. He rode the tower all the way down, and luckily, he wasn't injured at all. I mean, how that happened, out of the grace of God, because he shouldn't have been able to at least walk away from it. On another part of the field, away from the TV cameras, reporter Todd Archer is pinned down. When I was underneath the thing, I remember saying, hey, hey, I'm under here. Someone help me, help me. One person tries to lift the canopy off of him, but it's too heavy. So he saw that was on the ground. He tried to lift the thing up. He later said it's like a car. He couldn't budget. Needing more muscle, two players come to help. Cornerback D'Angelo Smith, a fifth round draft pick from the University of Cincinnati, and linebacker Brandon Williams, a fourth round choice from Texas Tech. And then two players came over, D'Angelo Smith and Brandon Williams, and they helped lift the thing up and I was able to crawl out and, and get out of the building. Todd's bruised and bleeding. I, I had like scrapes and I had some blood on my elbow and blood on my legs and stuff, but nothing major. And actually I continued to work that day. I was sore, but nothing that felt bad. Several people called 911. My first clear, very clear memory was maybe four or five steps after I'd gotten out of the building, kind of was getting my wits about me. One of the assistant coaches screaming, someone call 911, someone call 911. Are you in the facility collapsed during a practice? Uh, what is collapsed? They're in the practice facility. OK. Anybody hurt? I, I, I have no idea. I ran out of there. There might still be people in there. I have no idea. Oh, we got somebody. Cameraman Larry Rodriguez calls into the headquarters and asks them to send a satellite truck to the scene 
so they can report live. Flat over Valley Ranch. Get us a live truck out here ASAP. The whole practice facility just got hit by a huge crest of wind. The whole, the whole tank came down on everybody. We got people trapped. With the adrenaline and everything that was involved, I just, it, it took me a while to go, okay, call the station, let them know that the building's collapsed. He films players ripping through the fabric, looking for anyone trapped. You just heard coaches and players, there's someone over here, there's somebody over here. Hold on, I got a knife. <laughs> Hello? The ceiling now is the floor, and you've got to be care cautious of where you walk, because again, the ceiling is now the floor. You don't want to step on anybody that may be pinned underneath. It soon becomes clear there are serious injuries. I could see Chris Hall, the Cowboy Scout. I'll never forget the look on his face, because like, I, I had gone back into it to try to help anybody any way I could, and Chris was jammed underneath metal or something. And I'll never forget the look on his face. Clearly, he was in shock, and he was doing this. It's a massive disaster. I had no thought that the whole building was going to come down. That was not even something that I imagined could be possible. Honestly, I had no idea how bad the damage was until we actually physically left part of the tent that we were in. And then we got out and we saw the devastation across the field. And then immediately I go, oh my god, tornado. That's exactly what it was. Everyone assumes a tornado destroyed the facility. But was it? Violent weather causes the Dallas Cowboys practice facility to collapse on May 2, 2009. Twelve people are treated for broken bones and bruises at nearby hospitals. Everybody kept saying it could have been worse. And then when we found out about Rich, uh, our reaction was, no, it was, it was worse. The most severely injured is 33-year-old assistant scout coach Rich Beam, who's paralyzed from the waist down. It's just a, a tragedy that, that you know, a guy like him, a good guy, father of three, that something like that had to happen to him. To determine if a tornado is responsible, the National Weather Service immediately goes to the scene of the disaster to perform a ground assessment. In order to get a full understanding of, of what happened, you really need to be out looking for these damage patterns. You know, was everything blown in one direction, or could you see evidence of rotation in the debris pattern? The disaster is not the result of a tornado the damage that I saw was basically blown the same direction that the storms were moving. Very little structural damage, though, outside of the practice facility itself that, that we were able to see. It was pretty easy to tell early on that, that it was a microburst that had moved through the area. A microburst is a sudden, explosive rush of wind that blows straight down from the sky and then spreads outward near the ground. Microbursts are extremely dangerous. If you could imagine a, a balloon filled with water and dropping it from you know, some distance as, the, as that balloon hits the ground and begins to spread outward, that's probably more indicative of what a microburst is really like. The phenomenon was given its name by Dr. Tetsuya Ted Fujita, the meteorologist responsible for the Fujita scale, the tornado classification system. But unlike a tornado, the winds in a microburst do not rotate. They occur most often during severe thunderstorms when air is cooled by melting hail or evaporating raindrops and sinks rapidly downward, sometimes with ferocious results. That downdraft can accelerate towards the ground so that as that air hits the ground and spreads out, it can produce potentially damaging winds. Uh, the nature of a microburst makes it particularly dangerous to aircraft in flight. Several plane accidents have been linked to the phenomenon, including Delta Flight 191, which crashed at nearby DFW Airport after flying through a microburst on August 2nd, 1985. 135 people were killed, 29 survived. Following that event, uh, a lot of work was done to train pilots on how to recognize and avoid microbursts and also to really upgrade our technology. But as the Cowboys tragedy demonstrates, microbursts are still a deadly threat. It doesn't always take 
the most meteorologically intense phenomena to cause the most significant impacts. Uh, it doesn't have to be you know, an EF5 tornado to cause impacts to people in the threatened area. A microburst causes the Dallas Cowboys practice facility to collapse, injuring 12, including assistant scouting coach Rich Beam, who's paralyzed from the waist down. Rich Beam has returned to work in a limited capacity. You know, he's out there in his wheelchair. I think that you can't help but look at a guy like that, see his positive attitude, and, uh, and, and not draw some inspiration from that. As the Cowboys struggle to move forward with their season, the reporters who cover them see the team brought closer together by the tragedy. I think it will be sold as you know, a rallying cry. You know, we're bonded together closer. And I think genuinely, I think anybody who is in there does have that sort of bond now. For the Weather Channel, I'm meteorologist Jim Cantori. Your local forecast is next.